Ptarmigan Creek is a lesser known but cool pack raft float on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. The run is just over three miles in length and easy to access from a popular trail off the Seward Highway. Upstream, Ptarmigan Lake keeps the flows reliable and the water warm relative to nearby rivers. Ptarmigan's Class 3 difficulty fills a crucial gap in the local paddling lineup between easier stretches like on the Kenai, Lower Snow, and Resurrection Rivers, and more advanced stuff on nearby Primrose, Canyon Creek, and Six Mile. To add to the intrigue, the mysterious upper gorge at the lake outlet just above the normal put-in is a possibly never paddled Class 5 test piece awaiting an expert willing to put in the time. All in all, Ptarmigan Creek is worth the effort and a great addition to the local whitewater scene. Ptarmigan Creek has reliable flows for most of the year. As long as it isn't frozen or flooding, it's probably good to go. A rusty gauge of the takeout gives you an idea of what to expect prior to putting in. To find this gauge, follow a short path from the middle of three parking areas past a picnic table to the water. Though it's a bit hidden, the gauge is bolted to a rock in the fast water just upstream of the takeout eddy. The creek has been run down to 0.6, but it's shallow and bony at these levels. In October 2020, heavy rains brought the creek up to 1.8, and it looked like an eddyless torrent running through the trees. Part of the approach trail was knee-deep underwater at that high level. An ideal flow for the first time down seems to be around 0.9. The biggest concern is always the ever-changing wood hazard, so too high of a flow could make stopping and portaging new wood difficult or even impossible. Ptarmigan Lake Trailhead is found at mile 23 off the Seward Highway. Follow this well-defined and popular trail for three miles. A tenth of a mile before the lake, turn right at a distinct curved tree just before the trail turns left and descends a small hill. Follow a vague path into the brush, trending left until you drop into a muddy gully. Slog down this gully to the Puddin' Eddy at the base of the upper gorge. The normal Puddin' is a big eddy at the base of Divide and Conquer, the final rapid of the upper gorge. You can launch above Divide and Conquer, but it's a rocket start immediately into the rapid's crux. Just downstream of the normal put-in lies Corner Pocket, a fun and exciting rapid on a hard left bank. There's a permanent looking log jam just downstream. The next mile is mostly a scenic cruise with fun eddy hopping and class 2 plus whitewater. There is usually some wood to maneuver around or portage.
Around mile one, you reach a series of gooseneck bends followed by a steeper drop. Just downstream, the canyon starts to tighten up. This is the beginning of the lower gorge. The lower gorge holds the best white water of the run. The canyon walls close in, and there are several fun intermediate rapids. Most likely, you will find a log or two to portage. The climax of the lower gorge is Corkscrew, a twisting, multi-part rapid that is one of the most challenging of the run. Wood tends to choke this one up, however, forcing a difficult Devil's Club portage. After Corkscrew, the creek mellows and opens up again. You reach Trailside not far downstream. This lower section is mostly class two, but beware, as with the rest of the run, of new and shifting wood. The most notable drop of the lower section is a fun river-wide ledge named Flaccid Falls after a pop pack raft on an early descent. The takeout comes a half mile farther on river right, just above the highway bridge and next to the gauge. For those interested in a challenge, Ptarmigan Creek's Upper Gorge offers a tenth of a mile of intense white water that has rarely, if ever, been paddled. This section can be scouted by crossing the lake outlet just above the first drop and bushwhacking downstream on river left. The Upper Gorge has five drops that essentially run together into one long and technical rapid. Once you commit, it is very difficult to get out or even catch an eddy for a breath. Scout carefully for wood and consider stationing safety in a couple of key locations, especially between the second and third drop. At 0.7, it looks bony but doable and not too pushy. At 1.0, everything looks faster and bigger and pretty scary. 
At high water, this section is probably suicidal. 